For millions around the world, Roger Federer is the face of tennis. The Swiss man broke almost every record in the book, disposing of his opponents with a smooth forehand, a delicate backhand, and immaculate footwork. He carried himself with textbook technique and was an unwavering ambassador for the sport, something that continues to this day. By 21 years old, Federer had already won Wimbledon, the most prestigious tournament in tennis. He went on to eclipse Pete Sampras's record of 14 grand slams by a margin of six. And in a fierce golden era of competition between Federer, Rafael Nadal, and Novak Djokovic, he earned a place as a fan favorite for his ease of play and calm-headed approach. But as his records have been eclipsed and the GOAT conversation has moved towards his former rivals, is Federer's legacy still as strong? This is the story of Roger Federer, who brought an entire generation of players and fans into tennis and spent almost two decades at the top of the sport. Roger was born into the Federer family, one of the oldest in Switzerland, and has remained in the aristocratic class for around 1,500 years. Roger continued this tradition of holding powerful positions in society, only he would do it from a unique angle, through sport. He enjoyed playing football, badminton, and basketball growing up. But when he was introduced to tennis, an eight-year-old Roger Federer was instantly addicted. Within three years, he was serving as a ball boy at competitions in his hometown of Basel. As a young kid playing tennis, his temperament was almost completely opposite to the calm figure the world would come to love decades later. He would lose his temper if things didn't go his way, smashing rackets. There was no denying his natural abilities, though. Federer quickly climbed the ranks of the junior world. In 1998, at the age of 16, he had his first taste of major success when he won a junior Grand Slam at Wimbledon. In the same year, he turned professional and was given his biggest opportunity from a wildcard entry in the 1998 Swiss Indoors. On home soil, he was paired against world number one Andre Agassi in the first round. The 1990s had been dominated by Agassi and Pete Sampras, an era that would continue until the early 2000s, when Federer, along with a new generation of players, would usher in a new dawn. But this would take some time to materialize. Without enough experience or development, he was beaten comfortably, which put Federer on track toward the tennis elite. The following year, he broke into the top 100. Two years later, when he faced Agassi's arch-nemesis Pete Sampras, Federer had become a more complete player. The Swiss was 19 years old, but he was playing at Wimbledon, where he had already found success as a junior player. He was the heavy underdog coming up against the number one seed. In a grueling five-set match, Federer defeated Sampras to take himself into the quarterfinals. Despite losing that quarterfinal, Federer gained international fame with his upset win over Sampras. 2001 was his introduction to elite tennis. If he wanted to stick around, though, there was one problem Federer needed to get under control. Peter Lundgren, who was coaching Federer at the time, described him as being hot-tempered and lacking control at this early stage. Over the three years that Lundgren coached the Swiss prodigy, Federer had a dramatic transformation, realizing that maturity was the key to unlocking his talent. He was helped through this by his partner Miroslava Vavrinkova, whom he met in 2000. Many have credited Mirka, as she came to be known, for Roger's character development. With his anger under control, he was ready to take on the world. In 2003, Federer proved that he was more than a one-hit wonder. Just as in his junior career, his success came at Wimbledon. He beat Andy Roddick on the way to the finals, where he was matched against Mark Philippoussis, making easy work of the Australian to win in three straight sets. Federer had won his first Grand Slam, but it wasn't enough to guarantee him the number one spot, which would elude him for another year. He achieved it by winning three Grand Slams and kicking off an era of Federer dominance that few were prepared for. By 2004, Federer had a 7-3 record advantage against Agassi, who was the only player to be realistically challenging him after Sampras announced his retirement. Agassi was nearing the end of his career, though when he met Federer in the US Open Finals, he was ready to breathe life back into it. Taking it to four sets, Agassi fought hard against his younger competitor to hang on, but eventually, it was too much. After what ended up being Agassi's last major final of his career, he was full of praise for Federer, saying, I think Roger is the best I've played against. To watch him evolve has been amazing. With that, the torch was officially passed. Yeah. 
After Sampras and Agassi, Federer was not the only top player. This period saw a growing rivalry against Rafael Nadal, who was a clay court master. On grass at Wimbledon, though, Federer was untouchable, winning five in a row until Nadal stopped him in 2007, who also took his number one ranking in 2008, breaking 237 weeks of Federer at the top. At the 2008 Australian quarterfinals, though, Federer was knocked out by the rising talent of Djokovic, who was increasingly challenging the top two. But between July 2005 and August 2009, only Federer and Nadal held the number one and number two spots in the rankings. In 2009, with Federer's sixth Wimbledon win, he made history, passing Pete Sampras's record of 14 major titles. Federer and Nadal were increasingly challenged by Djokovic over the following decade and a half, with a group known as the Big Three for how dominating they were throughout that period, blaming eight U.S. Opens, 12 Wimbledon, 15 French Open, and 15 Australian Open titles between 2008 and 2023. This has been described as the golden age of tennis. Federer was the first to break through, while Nadal's supremacy on clay court made him unbeatable at the French Open. The Federer and Nadal rivalry was for years the most anticipated in the sport, partly because of their contrasting playing styles. While Federer's smooth shots combined pace with deadly accuracy to give the appearance of ease to his playing, Nadal's physically demanding style leveraged his superior to achieve the same quality. After claiming his 1,000th win in 2015, Federer's career was hit with uncertainty as his injuries worsened. He withdrew from the Miami Open, was knocked out of the Monte Carlo Masters in the quarterfinals, was beaten in the semifinals at Wimbledon, and pulled out of the 2016 Summer Olympics. Plus, a torn meniscus required arthroscopic surgery and put him out of competition for almost three months. While many fans feared that his injuries would be career-ending, Federer was down but not out. 2017 couldn't have been a stronger response. He began the year by winning the Australian Open, beating Rafael Nadal in the final and his favorite event, Wimbledon. Federer had one of the finest performances of his career. He blazed through the field, winning the entire tournament without dropping a single set. Two years later, he won what would be his final Grand Slam title at the Australian Open and became the oldest number one ranked player ever, over 36 and a half years old. This title was his 20th, a number thought to be untouchable until Nadal and later Djokovic surpassed it. In 2020 and 2021, he underwent two knee surgeries that both put him out of the sport for months at a time. In 2022, he announced his retirement and the Labor Cup was taken as a farewell party. His greatest rivals, Nadal and Djokovic, led heartfelt tributes to Federer. Nadal and Federer were pictured sitting beside each other in tears. Both players helped define the other's careers and the two formed a close relationship throughout. Part of Federer's legacy was on full show at his farewell event. He founded the Labor Cup, a team event that pits Team Europe against Team World. The Invitational Tournament is a chance to see some of the best-ranked players face off outside of the usual tour. Off the court, Federer has pioneered humanitarian efforts for UNICEF. For almost two decades, Federer was the most recognizable face in tennis. Sponsors flocked to him for his broad appeal. In 2016, he was named the most marketable sportsperson in the world by the London School of Marketing. A partnership with Rolex earned him between $1.5 and $8 million per year. He also signed a deal with Uniqlo worth $300 million. These deals and prize winnings of over $130 million have driven his career earnings to a staggering $1.1 billion. While he has fallen behind both Djokovic and Nadal in the number of titles, Federer has been singled out for years because of his playing style. Veteran player turned pundit John McEnroe called Federer the most beautiful player he had ever seen. Both in technique and personality, the tennis world is unlikely to see another Federer ever again.